How has it been that many of the churches have become woke, deceived, spiritually paralyzed and bankrupt? How has the church arrived in this position? If you've got a Bible, would you like to turn to Genesis chapter 27 verse 38? How has the church arrived? Spiritually bankrupt. Esau said to his father, Do you have one only one blessing? Bless me too. My father. Then Esau wept out aloud. His father Isaac answered him, Your dwelling will be away from the earth's richness and away from the dew of heaven above. You will live by the sword and you will serve your brother. And when you grow restless and tired, you will break his yoke from your neck. Father, open your word, hide my face. Only let your word be revelation to the people that are listening to this word and give us a new insight to this passage of scripture. It's my belief many of the churches operating today have no revelation have no fresh food for the people. And they're operating in a space where they've split, slipped into a total deception, taking many of the parishioners with them down a road of utter deception, wokeness, spiritual bankruptcy, to a road of captivity to please their own earthly desires. And if the church wants to reclaim its power and come back, and claim its authority in the position that it rightfully owns, and that is to preach the gospel, the Great Commission, and bring people into the kingdom of heaven. In this story, Esau was a man of the earth. He lived by sight, he lived by his feelings, he lived by his senses. But unfortunately he had little or no regard for the things of God and spiritual things. And when you consider what God had actually promised to him, that his grandfather Abraham, the most incredible promise ever given to any living human being on the face of the planet, I'm going to multiply you, I'm going to bless you, I'm going to increase you. In fact, it's so profound this blessing, it was to be a blessing to all the people in the earth and to all generations. And all your descendants are going to be more than the stars in the skies and the descendants more than the sand on the seashore. It's such a phenomenal blessing, all leading to the formation today, to the present day church that we go to in New Zealand. And all over the world, this was the blessing given and handed down. And even though the blessing was promised to Abraham, he never actually lived to see it. But he received it and lived by faith. And many of the forefathers to this date have embraced the promise of God that could not be seen by the natural eye or even understood or comprehended with the natural mind. So in this promise of faith, Abraham passed it on to his son Isaac and Esau, who was the next in line. And in Genesis 25 verse 34, we read that Esau utterly despised his birthright. He held it with no regard, no respect, no reverence. And I believe this applies to the present day church because each one of us are set apart to be what God originally intended the church to be and look like in our community. And that is to walk, walk in his divine purpose and to be victorious. And the question I pose to you this morning, listening online, how much do you really esteem God's divine purpose for your life? Not how much do you esteem your own intellectual knowledge, 
not your own wishful thinking, not your own earthly understanding, but how much do you esteem God's divine purpose? And the question again is this, do you really hold this in high regard? Because in this story, Esau certainly did not. And there's plenty of Esau's living in our lives and in the churches today. And God told them that the promise would be passed down throughout all generations, but Esau treated this so lightly and so casually with no regard because Esau got tired of living by faith. He got tired of believing in something he couldn't see. He got tired of being promised something that wasn't at hand. And so as a man of the earth, he turned his satisfaction to the things of this world, the things that he could see. And thus he despised what he couldn't see and traded it for what he could see. And this is exactly what has happened to many of the churches in New Zealand. Many of the churches have begun to despise the things of God for the things that they can see and not the things that they cannot see in the supernatural. So the churches have decided to move the goalposts to those things to which they can see. Creating modern versions of what the Bible means to common man because it didn't mean and it doesn't apply today. Rock bands, smoke screens, stainless steel balustrades, coffee clubs, and let's change the scripture to what it means in modern woke language and have women as elders and ministers and the list goes on. And they really have got tired of the word of God. They've got sick of the word of God. They've wanted to change the word of God to suit their own earthly desires like Esau did. And this is why there's no revivals and there's no souls won into the kingdom of heaven. And there's no anointing of the fire of the Holy Spirit burning in men and women's souls anymore. And the cares of men and women going to a Christless eternity because the lights have gone out in the church. And so Esau, having left his divine purpose in his heart, had opened the door wide open to be, for his brother to become his master. And many of God's churches have left the, God, the door wide open and left God's divine purpose for perpetrators to come in and fraudsters. And when the church of New Zealand lost its fervency to preach the full counsel of the gospel, when it came to preach love messages every week, and when it developed inclusion as not to upset anybody in the church, and when it came to preach a health wealth gospel, when it made up all these woke non-scriptural songs with no scripture in them, and when the church lost the passion to win souls at all cost, and when the focus was opened to people that proclaimed and paraded themselves around to be one of us and become elders and ministers in the church. Appointing woke ministers to lead us into spiritual dryness and eventually bankruptcy. And this is exactly what has happened here. Jacob claimed to be Esau. And this is exactly what's happened today in the people in the church claiming to be part of the body of Christ, wandering around as learned men, only to be found out to be fools but they are rather deceivers and absolute liars in the church ministering such blasphemy as godliness leads to financial gain and ministering a pathway to godliness to which is to be healthy and wise, swindlers leading, leading the people of the church, selecting who's in and who's out. In Genesis 27:35, But he said, Your brother came deceitfully and took your blessing. And Esau said, isn't he right named Jacob? This is the second time he has taken advantage of me. He took my birthright and now he's taken my blessing. Then he asked, haven't you reserved any blessing for me? Isaac answered Esau and said, I have made him lord over you and have made all his relatives and his servants. And I've sustained him with grain and new wine. So what? can I possibly do for you, my son? Jude puts it like this. 
for certain men have crept in unnoticed, who long ago were marked out for, the, for this condemnation. Ungodly men, swindlers of the faith, they grabbed pulpits by deceit. They became the masters of God's people and turned the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ into lewdness and denied the power of the gospel. This is sadly, folks, the condition of the church in New Zealand. If the present day church is going to be part of any sort of revival, we can no longer turn a deaf ear and a blind eye to the truth and the magnificence of the gospel and water it down to please itch, itching ears and become pleasers of men. It's time, and I'm not ashamed, to call it out what it is. I listened to a local church last week. Can you believe 39 minutes passed without one scripture read? Man shall live by the word of God. And when he did utter it, he had lived it. So short was a Sunday school verse. Woke ministers, more concerned about their own opinions and not bothering about the opinions of God. Concerned about climate change, pushing it in the church from the pulpit. Drag queens and acceptance of homosexual ministers. Compliance with government rules and regulations contrary to the word of God is normal now. And women elders and pastors are parading around the church in high positions, interviewing people for the position of pastorship. They all got there, folks, simply because of the Esau spirit that took hold of the church casually. The church took things casually, lightly. Say nothing, see nothing, know nothing. The inheritance of the things of God that was promised to, to the church to create what it was meant to be, to win souls into the kingdom of heaven, has been diluted and taken lightly. And now it's full of old people, ineffective, no harvest, no insight, no revelation of the word of God and the depth and the riches. Oh yes, we'll read a, have a reading this morning as part of the gig. We'll do our soup sinks, kitchens, food banks. But sadly, dryness of soul to which end people beginning and beginning to believe anything sold to them by men, by governments, and by, sadly, pulpits. And be so deceived in their thinking and electing the truth Half of them wouldn't be in church if it didn't dish up the tripe it does each week. What people want to hear. What people want to be looked up at. And people want to be accepted within the group. They want the garbage. They want the love message. They want the woke message. Give us something to please us. Appease our conscience and our sin. Give us something that we can see. Give us a rock band. Give us a golden calf of a coffee club. This is why most of the super churches are conducted in massive football fields, filling up the people completely blindsided, full of deception and nothing of the word of God. Give us everything that this world has to offer. We're now sick and tired in the church living by faith. We want our own full inheritance now. We do not want to deny ourselves and take up our cross. We're tired of living our lives to bless others. We want to be blessed and have that fuzzy human spirit that entertains us with a fuzzy song and not anything else. And we want it now and we want it quickly and we want to be in a happy, clappy mood in the church. We want to feel good about ourselves. 
We want to be accepted and respected and esteemed in high regard by governments and businessmen and people in power. And we actually don't care less about our kids not attending church. And when the spirit of Esau crept into the church to lead the people, the imposters began to assemble themselves in line to take them exactly what they wanted to hear. A gospel of comfort. A gospel of love. A gospel of ease. A gospel of lies. To which end you now never hear anything about the precious blood of Jesus. And do not mention the sacrifice of the cross. Do not mention the cross. Do not mention demonic spirits. Do not dare speak about repentance. And we are all lovely people driving nice cars and nice clothes. And now we have arrived in the church, sadly, in this utter, total chaos. All right, Isaac saw Esau. Isaac told Esau this, By your sword you will live, and you will serve your brother. In other words, this kind of leadership leads us to living by our own strength, by our own thinking, by our own understanding, by our own sight, and leads the church away from the supernatural things of God and leads us to a naturally weak position, woke, spiritually bankrupt. And hence we now have much of the building blocks in the church to glorify human thinking, human understanding, human answers, human worship, professing to be wise only to be found out to be fools. And many who are thinking there in a comfortable space, thinking I have the house, I've got the boat, I've got the husband, I've got the job, I've got the church, and now what? Only to find there's something radically missing. I find myself spiritually hungry and weak each week. My life is a mess. I don't want anybody to know outside the church it's a mess. I thought that once I had all these things and comfortable in the church, I would be satisfied, only to find none of it did, not even the church. And many of you have come to this ultimate conclusion and you have said to yourself, I'm tired of all of this now. I'm tired of this wokeness. I'm tired of being hungry. And you're now in a state where Esau found himself when he lifted his voice and wept and said, Bless me, O my father, bless me, for there is a famine in the land. No longer nothing makes any sense. Nothing else now makes me satisfied except the blessings of my father. There's a famine in the church that they will not stand up and tell the truth of the gospel by the sword of the spirit any longer. There's a famine of clear thinking of the scriptures any longer. And people now have come to the position in New Zealand that they're tired and exhausted and don't know what to do because they've been fed a diet that has left them in a position of spiritual bankruptcy. Crying out in the house of God wanting to come back to the house of worship like it used to be and live by his spirit live by faith and conviction, wanting to be consumed by the fire of his word and the sword of the spirit and not your own sword. But you're living by your own sword. You've been living by your own sword in the church. You've been living in your own reasoning. Your own reasoning in the natural You've been living in your own power. You've been living in your own understanding. And now you have become exhausted, run out of steam. Playing the church game, listening to woke nonsense every week. And you're now yearning to come back to the spirit of the Lord and becoming him to be your strength where God will show you the truth and the depth and the revelation of his word and live in a victorious position that only God can intend you to be and take you. But you've run out of resources. And you've said, I'm tired of rolling up in the church in my nice car and fancy clothes and parking lots, being nice to everyone, knowing 
that I have no power and I'm not like this at home and at work. So what's wrong with me? You're beginning to examine yourself and knowing that there's something missing. And when Esau finally got to the point that he found that something was missing in his life, like many of us, he said, came to his senses and said, Bless me, O oh my father. Then Esau lifted up his eyes and he wept. Folks, don't be ashamed to lift your voice to God and weep and come back to the house of worship before the living God and cry out to God, will you please bless me beyond measure? And when Esau had had enough, when Esau was tired and exhausted living his fake life, he lifted his voice to his father and he blessed him. And it shall come to pass when you grow r r restless and it shall come to pass when you get tired of the woke sermons and it will, be, when it, it will come to pass when you're spiritually bankrupt and come to the end of your road, you will break his yoke from your neck. In other words, when you finally wake up and see that many, not all, let me make that clear, many have been led by liars and deceivers parading around, women elders leading, feeding the flock. And when you become tired of it, sitting in a pew, going spiritually bankrupt week after week, feeding on man's thoughts, living in their own imaginations, finding out that they, the ministers themselves and elders are slaves of corruption, you're going to break your yoke off your neck. Folks, I'll call it out for what it is, and I'm not ashamed to do so. There are many Jacobs sitting in the church, frauds, deceivers, leading God's people to deception and spiritual bankruptcy and absolutely no revelation of the word of God. But it's not too late to weep and cry and ask God to bless you. Let's pray. Father, help us never to adopt this shocking Esau spirit that we may grow tired of your word and become restless and we want to change things to be what man wants to please himself with. But let us desire your word. Keep us in your word this week and give us a hunger for your truth again this week. We ask these things in your precious name. Amen.